Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, I'm super excited to be here. My name is Leona Navid. This is not my first time on FOSDEM, but I'm in love in FOSDEM. So every time I'm on stage at FOSDEM, I'm super, super excited. Uh, first of all, thank you very much to Philip, who has been running the Embedded Dev Room for 15 years in a row. There was a gap last year, and now thanks to this wonderful team, uh, thanks to which we have the Embedded Dev Room again. They're a great team, and they deserve it. Uh, so my name is Leon Onovi. I'm working for a, cons a consultancy company called Consalco Group. Uh, the company specialized in embedded development in various open source software. And today, I'll be showing you some of the technologies that I um, use in my everyday work, like the Yocto project and Open Embedded, to build a maker's project. And this project is Homebridge. This is the agenda for today. I have the ambitious goal to uh, go through 30 slides in approximately 22, 23 minutes and have a few minutes for questions. We'll see if it works out, or maybe not. Uh, first, we're going to talk about Homebridge. Uh, Homebridge is an open source software that enables various third-party devices to Apple HomeKit. How many of you are using iPhone, Apple iPhone? I'm not using an iPhone, that's why I'm not raising my hand. All right, just a few of you. Don't worry, guys, the focus is actually on the open source side of things and building a custom GNU Linux distribution that incorporates Homebridge um, using the Yocto project and Open Embedded. We'll explore uh, certain features of the distribution that I built, um, a lot of ideas for improvements because this is a hobby project that I have been doing in the past few months and there is uh, room for a lot of imp improvements. And finally, um, there will be some conclusions. So. Um, why? Why I'm doing this? Obviously, the first answer to anyone on stage at FOSDEM is that we're doing these things because, because we can and because it's cool and it's open source. However, uh, the story in this case has another aspect. I have a very good friend from high school who is an electrical engineer, and as part of his job, uh, he did a very complex setup with very expensive proprietary tool for a customer of uh, his. And the customer asked him, hey, can I do this and that? From, um, from my iPhone, and the answer was that actually this expensive proprietary tool at that moment, according to my friend, was not able to do it. So he called me for help to do something with free and open source software, which is obviously better in this case. And the answer was Homebridge. Um, that's how we started. Um, he bought a Raspberry Pi, of course. This is one of my favorite single board computers. And um, he asked me at his office at night to set it up. We spent a couple of hours to install Raspbian, to enable f any, uh, everything on Raspbian. Raspbian is, I'm sure you know, this is the default um, Linux distribution recommended by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. After that, we've installed Node.js, Homebridge, all plugins, all, all dependencies. So honestly, this is um, a little bit annoying and time-consuming process. It's pretty much going through a list of steps that you install things, and you are spending some time just um, um, waiting for the downloads and the installation to complete. And uh, for me, it's a little bit annoying, but for non-Linux uh, non users, it co could be even a little bit tricky. So after doing this, I proposed, hey, let's do a distribution that kind of works out of the box, or at least try to make it work out of the box. I wanted to, to have something similar for other um, uh, complementary um, open source project that I, for home automation that I wanted to run at home. I have um, numerous years of uh, professional experience at Consulco Group uh, working with the Yocto project and Open Embedded, so this was my choice to build distribution. So, um, in this case, I wanted to, to test the Yocto project and Open Embedded in the aspect of a maker. Um, a, few, a few words about Homebridge. It's a lightweight server that emulates Apple uh, iOS a HomeKit API. It's written in Node.js, and it supports numerous plugins. With these plugins, you can attach various third-party de uh, devices, Internet of Things, or your do-it-yourself devices that are not officially supported by Apple. Nowadays, uh, the Apple ecosystem is becoming more open. However, Homebridge has been a while for, uh, for several years. It can be installed by macOS, Windows, and of course, GNU Linux distributions. In our case, we're, we're going to build a custom GNU Linux distribution. 
Uh, it's entirely open source. It's available at GitHub and our Apache license. And this is the web page of Homebridge where you can get started. Um, over these years, Homebridge has, um, has uh, established um, a huge community. It uh, was started by Nick Farina, who is based in the US. Uh, I have never personally met this um, developer, but he seems extremely skillful and very helpful. He's in Twitter, so we can find him, follow him, and say thanks for this great project that he has done. Uh, there are thousands of plugins developed by various contributors, and um, there are a lot of contributors to the core Homebridge uh, Node.js implementation, and this is based on the work of a lot of people through the years. Uh, this is a, a short list of some of the Homebridge plugins which I think are um, useful to, to have. Uh, of course, each plugin depends on the type of device that you have and uh, the way you want to set it up. This is a very user-friendly plugin uh, because this is a web interface which allows you to uh, modify Homebridge from your uh, web browser. And this is just a list of, um, list of other plugins. I'm listing Imputity here because in our Linux distribution that we're going to build, um, I've included an, an Imputity broker. Um, so let's build an embedded Linux distribution. How to do it? How many of you have built a Linux distribution from scratch? All right, that's fantastic. Uh, pretty much the whole room. <laughs> um, there's a lot of different ways how to approach this. Um, one of the ways is the Yocto project and Open Embedded, which I'll be using uh, for the rest of the slides here. Of course, other popular projects are Buildroot, uh, PDXDesk, which is having a talk uh, later on today, OpenWRT, which is more for Wi-Fi routers but can be used for other projects as well, and the most popular, in my opinion, maker approach is to grab a Debian derivative and to, you know, change the root FS. This is a, a fast way to do it. However, it has some disadvantages. And Chris, who's over there, had an excellent talk that I would like to recommend you. Uh, it was for at the Embedded Linux conference in Lyon. He was comparing what are the advantages and the disadvantages when you proceed with the Yocto project or uh, use a Debian distribution. So, um, what to include in our distribution? When you start building an embedded Linux distribution, you need a board support package. In general, the board support package, as the name suggests, is provided by the vendor, the people that are manufacturing the boards. However, in reality, it's not always like this, but often there are community-supported board support packages that are pretty good. The board support package includes a bootloader, for example, U-Boot, a Linux kernel, device tree drivers, um, after uh, having uh, the BSP ready, we need an, an, an init system. Systemd was my choice. I personally like it. I know that a lot of people don't like it, but yeah, that's my choice. Um, we, we needed something to, uh, for uh, connectivity um, and interfacing the board. Uh, one of the problems that I've experienced setting up Raspbian with my friend for the very first time is that Raspbian is not intended for the things out of the box we wanted to do, so we had to go to Raspi config and manually enable SSH, VNC, serial communication, and so on. And um, in, in my distribution, I wanted everything, uh, 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 all those interfaces to be enabled by default out of the box. We need Node.js and NPM uh, because um, Homebridge is written in Node.js. I wanted to add a Mosquito Broker. This is for my personal uh, use, but I'm sure that uh, a lot of you are al already familiar with the machine-to-machine -machine protocol Imputity. It's a really cool thing to have in anything related to home automation. Um, we needed an X11 window link, uh, we needed a, a window link system, and I decided to use X11, although I'm a huge fan of Way1. But for this project, I said, OK, X11 is OK. Um, I put the open box as a compositor and a few um, basic applications. So even if there is a user without experience in Linux, if he starts the, um, the distribution, he has the basic things already installed there. Um, one of the things that is interesting is the Surf uh, web browser, very minimalistic web browser that is controlled only by keyboard shortcuts. And as soon as the distribution turns on, 
um, Surf presents the uh, web UI provided by the plugin for Homebridge. And I wanted to add a low cost uh, OLED display for some basic information because the idea of this thing is that you're going to use, in most of the cases, this distrib distribution without a proper HDMI monitor. So let's get started now with the Yocto project and Open Embedded. How many of you have been using the Yocto project and Open Embedded are, and are familiar with this? All right, that's good. So now comes the really hard part. Yocto is a great thing, but it's very hard to explain the terminology without messing the words. So forgive me if I make a mistake. So the Yocto project is an open source collaborative project of the Linux Foundation. Um, it, is, it is designed to build custom GNU Linux distribution uh, used in a variety of industries. The Yocto project has chosen the open embedded build system, which includes BitBake and Open Embedded Core. Pocky is the reference distribution um, of the Yocto project. It provides metadata, so you don't actually start from scratch, but you already have a list of recipes and layers on which you can you know, have a quick start, and after that you can continue customizing Pocky. Um, the Yocto project has releases twice per year. Uh, the, the, these are the, the recent releases. Uh, the Yocto project and Open Embedded have um, a lot of um, contributors working on those projects. There, is a, there are wiki pages with a lot of information, also mailing lists. So for the releases, the current stable release is Zeus, uh, which was released uh, in October. And in April, we are expecting the next, the next release. As of today, uh, it's recommended to use the latest stable. That's why I've based what I do on a version 3.0 Zeus. Uh, and if you follow the steps that you're going to see on the next slide, you'll get an image based on this uh, Yocto project release. In long term, I plan to keep updating the, um, the versions of the project and to keep up to date with the latest releases of the Yocto project. So um, in general, the Yocto project way of doing things is that you have various meta layers and often when you are starting as a developer to make something, you need to put a list of, um, and to, to uh, download a list of layers, after that to set up some configurations. To avoid doing this over and over again, I have used the Google Repo tool, which is um, a software tool for managing a collection of Git repositories. And um, with uh, this command, you can uh, get the manifest of the, uh, uh, of the repo that I have created. After that, to run repo sync. And using a template, you can initialize uh, the build environment. Uh, the build environment setup includes BB layers file, which is a description, a list of all meta layers used for building the project. And local.conf is another file where you set the machine because the Yocto project and Open Embedded allow you with the same meta metadata and various board support packages to have the same image built for various hardware. In this case, uh, for the moment, this distribution is supporting only Raspberry Pi. By default, we are building a 64-bit version of Ras for Raspberry Pi 4. However, since we have the meta Raspberry Pi um, layer included, you can manually switch uh, the machine ID uh, uh, to Raspberry Pi 3 or previous model. After that, you have to type in BitBake. It will take a while, so please be passionate. Uh, uh, have some, uh, spend some time drinking a cup of coffee or tea, and in a few hours, you have the image. Alternatively, if you don't have a Linux machine, don't want to build the source from scratch, or, and if you want to act like a regular user, Yes, there is a binary release in GitHub. You can just go there, download the image, uh, flash it on a micro SD card, and use it. To flash it on a micro SD card, um, the recommended way for people that are feeling more comfortable uh, with graphical user interfaces is Balena Etcher. Um, Balena Etcher is free and open source software. You select the, the image, the drive, and just flash it. That, that's all. Uh, alternatively, for those of you who are uh, more, uh, who are um, feeling more comfortable in a Linux terminal, you can do it with DD from the Linux terminal as well. So, 
let's have a look, a uh, quick look at what's uh, inside the the image. This is Homebridge uh, Config UI X um, open in a surf web browser. I have taken these screenshots. Uh, this is what you, want to, what you get as a user interface when you start. These are QR codes due, secu due to security reasons. I've just uh, wiped out parts of the code, so hopefully I'm secure now. Um, but this is what, you, what you're going to get when you turn on uh, the, the distribution for the very first time. It's a web browser that shows you this. this. If you have an HDMI monitor attached, this is what you're going to see. Or if you connect uh, via VNC, you will see again this thing. There are various uh, connectivity and interfacing options enabled by default, SSH. Uh, for the moment, there is no password. You just log in as root, and it's up to you to change the password to something secure. There is also VNC running, uh, so you can, use, uh, you can use VNC viewer to remotely connect to, to the device. And of course, uh, serial console, so if you have a USB to UART debug cable, you can get some output. Uh, one of the things that uh, is really cool about home automation projects is the ability to put them in a nice case and box. And this is, um, this is a DIN rail case. There are several DIN rail cases available for Raspberry Pi. Uh, I bought both of those. I ended up using more this Joyit cases. They are available as well as for Raspberry Pi 3 and 4. I designed um, a Raspberry Pi uh, hardware attached on top. This is an add-on board that you plug on top of the Raspberry Pi. Several years ago, I had a talk explaining how to design these these boards. It's a very straightforward process, actually. It's quite easy. I'm doing it with a free and open source software, KiCad, and this is open source hardware because it's available at GitHub. Super simple board with three buttons and a few uh, slots for attaching i squared c devices, one of which is the display. And here is the mini display. Those are low-cost, super cheap mini OLED displays that I've attached on top of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, put it in the case. So if you mount this case on a DIN rail, you have some basic information like what is the IP address of this, uh, of this box and statuses of the system, the services that are more interesting, Homebridge and Imputity. This is the Imputity uh, broker mosquito. So how does it work? When you turn on the image for very first time. System disk service is, um, starts a home bridge and its uh, plugins. Open box, which is um, uh, 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 com compositor uh, on top of X11, starts surf. This is the web browser, and surf automatically loads the web interface of um, the plugin provided for home bridge. Um, also, there is a Python script um, which is showing information on the mini OLED display, which is attached over I squared C. These are the layers that we are using in this distribution. As I told you, it's based on Pocky. Meta Raspberry Pi is the board support package layer. Those are standard layers um, that you can find in every uh, uh, in uh, Meta Open Embedded, like uh, Meta Open Embedded, Meta Python, uh, Meta GNOME, and Meta Networking. We n we're using recipes from all those layers. That's why they're included. And this is Meta Homebridge layer that I have created, and I put there some new um, new recipes. This is the Surf web browser. How many of you uh, are familiar with Surf? All right, it's pretty cool. Uh, give it a try. It's just keyboard shortcuts. Uh, a web browser that opens in full screen and you only have full uh, um, keyboard shortcuts. Pretty, pretty cool and pretty convenient. So uh, this is what you get when, when it starts. If you press Alt plus F4, <laughs> it will just uh, close and you have uh, um, open box. Uh, so Openbox is a uh, highly configurable and very simple windowing uh, manager for X11. There are a few, just a few configuration files, and with those configuration files, you can make uh, a lot of customizations. So on the next slide, you see how I have customized it and what you get if you turn off Surf. This is, uh, this is the screen that you get in the, in the distribution that uh, I've explained you how to build. Uh, as you can see, it's just a black dark screen with a few icons. I believe these are the minimal viable uh, applications needed for even non-Linux experienced user to um, configure Homebridge and to um, feel comfortable with this, this, this distribution. Uh, I promised you to show you how to build uh, Homebridge with the Yocto project and Open Embedded. This is a recipe. Um, it's a standard recipe that's inheriting uh, NPM. Uh, so in Yocto, there, there's 
there, 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 there are a lot of classes that you can reuse. This is just a code snippet, not the whole recipe. So we are inheriting npm here. Uh, this is the name of the recipe, which is in green. This is the version of the recipe. And uh, after that, Bitbakes takes care of the rest to build it. This is Homebridge at npm GS. So you, if, you, if you want to install it manually, this is uh, how to proceed uh, for those of you who are familiar with Node.js. And I'm using the same URL to build it. Uh, this is the Homebridge uh, system desk service, which takes care of uh, starting Homebridge when the application starts. I'm not going to too much details. The slides are available at SlideShare as well as on the Fosdem page. I'll make sure to update them right after the after the, this presentation. So, what's next? Obviously, what I did for um, over a couple of weekends is not enough, and there's plenty of things to to be done. Uh, one of the things that I would like to have is continuous integration and support future releases of the Yocto project to build a few images, binary images, so eventually people can start using what I have been done, I have done. Uh, for the moment, there are just a few of us using it. Of course, it's a very new product. Uh, I want to support mar uh, more hardware uh, platforms, especially STM32 MP1, uh, which I think is a very interesting new system on a chip and uh, would fit well for um, more you know, industrial environment where there is dust and so on. Raspberry Pi is not the perfect hardware for this um, for, for, for this environment. Software updates over the year, either with Mender or OS3, both have advantages and disadvantages. Both are great, actually. Uh, and this is something that is on my to-do list to integrate. Uh, both of those um, uh, open source software solutions support uh, Yocto Project and Open Embedded. Integration of more Homebridge plugins out of the box. W once you start this image, you can um, install manually various Homebridge plugins. However, I would like to integrate more, um, more of them. So, hopefully you've enjoyed this talk, but even if you haven't enjoyed it, there are some benefits for the ecosystem because um, during the way, uh, during my work, um, I was able uh, to upstream some contributions to uh, Meta Open Embedded, which are for Surf Recipe, a Stallone Tray, uh, and Update Mosquito and Openbox. And at the end of this talk, I would like to share some conclusions. So first of all, uh, it's something that I knew, and I'm sure you also knew before the start of this talk. Homebridge is a great open source platform if you are an um, iOS, Apple iOS uh, user and want to integrate various devices. Uh, with the Apple ecosystem, and it's an open source solution for various third-party devices. The Yocto project and Open Embedded are um, a great way to build custom embedded Linux distributions. It's a de facto an industry standard used in automotive, in medical industries, in, in networking, in various Internet of Things. However, uh, the, the, the last conclusion is about makers. The Yocto project and Open Embedded still have a steep learning curve. You have to learn a lot of things to get started. And when you build an image from scratch, it takes a significant amount of time, even if you have a powerful hardware. So still, for maker projects, uh, it will take some time for you to get started with the Yocto project and Open Embedded, especially if you don't have previous knowledge. But the Yocto project has uh, wonderful documentation, and uh, I encourage you to give it a try. Thank you very much. Um, and we have like one or two minutes for questions. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, why should someone choose Yocto over something like BuildRoot? Excellent question. So, I also have some upstream contributions to BuildRoot, and I like BuildRoot. However, I personally use uh, the Yocto project as on a daily basis at my work at Kansuku Group, so I'm feeling more comfortable with Yocto. I think. Just a personal opinion, it's a very sensitive topic. I think it's more customizable and uh, more powerful in certain ways. However, build root is a great choice as well. And there was another. Can you please pass it? Thank you for your talk. Um, do, do you, you said that you um, first did, did it on Raspbian, then uh, did your distribution using Yocto. Um, do you have an estimation of how long it took you to do it on Raspbian versus how long it took 
to do it uh, on Yocto? All right, thank you. That's an excellent question. So uh, the initial setup with Raspbian was a matter of uh, like a couple of hours, which included a quick uh, crash course to my friend who was non-Linux uh, user. Uh, for my distribution, it takes a significant amount of time to build this distribution from scratch. But once you have it, to get started, it's a matter of like 15 minutes to download the image, flush it, and get started. So from user's perspective, this is uh, a very fast way to, to approach because it's a distribution made for this. Time is up, so thank you very much for joining. I hope you've enjoyed it.